Hello? Muhammad? Hello teacher, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Fine, it's good to see you. It's good to see you too. What have you been up to this week? Sorry? I said, what have you been up to this week? What have you been doing? Uh, the, today uh, I start my uh, my job. Uh, you know, last uh, yesterday it was uh, a weekend for me. Mm. And uh, today, we, today we start. Uh, yes. Yeah, going back to work. So, what do you do for work, Mohammed? Hello. Hello. Do you hear me? I can hear you now. I okay. couldn't hear you a minute ago. So, okay, what do I'm, you do? What do you do for work? Uh, I'm working as an engineer Ooh. in a construction company. Very nice. Do you like your job? Mm, extremely, I like. <laughs> <laughs> you like it a lot. Good. That's awesome. You should. It's good if you like your job. It makes work very easy. But uh, the problem is uh, stressful. It's stressful. Yes. What makes it stressful? When uh, sometimes uh, I had to finish uh, urgent works, urgent uh, projects. Mm -hmm. So. It became uh, stress. Yeah, that's always when there's a time element. It always makes it more stressful. So, what do you do when you get stressed? How do you relax? What do you like to do? I start to uh, to change my way in the work. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, um, maybe sometimes I uh, go outside. Uh, take one cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> Smoke a cigarette. Uh, okay. Does that help? With uh, some help with other uh, uh, colleagues. Mm -mm. Yeah. I like to, if I'm really stressed out, I like to go for a walk. That's my favorite thing to do. But if I'm at work and I can't go for a walk and it's very, very stressful, I usually just will walk away from everybody for like five minutes and just go into a room by myself and just breathe and uh, I, I, I try to to make uh, the same but uh, uh, my phone will, will, will start ringing <laughs> oh yeah yeah you, you have a busy job they, yeah. they're gonna find you <clears throat> okay well this is an advanced class so we are only going to be spending about five minutes. We're going to be talking about dependent and subordinate clauses. Sorry, independent, dependent, and subordinate clauses. Um, but before we do that, our discussion topic, I'm talking about public libraries. So, Mohammed, okay, hmm. don't tell me. I'm, I remember where you live. I'm going to remember the city. I do not remember the city. <laughs> I think you uh, you will not remember you will do, you will not know. <laughs> where you I'm told from. me before, but I forgot no, no, the is, name. This is this is uh, first class with you, uh, with you as a teacher. Uh, because yesterday I have uh, I have uh, started the the classes uh, on the Colingo. This is your first class with me. With you, yes, but uh, maybe it is the th fourth class uh, in other teachers. With other, oh. with other teachers. Okay, so Muhammad, you have no picture. It's just like the the little character, and there are two other Muhammads who also mm. have no picture. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought you were a different Muhammad who I have in class all the time. Okay, I will I, I okay. will put uh, I will put a new uh, picture for the uh, <laughs> next class. <laughs> okay, so all you right. can determine which Muhammad is uh, talking with you. <laughs> New Muhammad, tell me all about yourself. See, I thought I was talking to somebody I already knew. <laughs> tell me where where are you from? How old are you? Uh, actually, I'm I'm, I'm 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 Syrian, Syrian national uh, nationality. But uh, I live in uh, uh, Saudi Arabia now. In Saudi Arabia? Yes. In what part? Uh, in Riyadh. Riyadh. 
I had I had a contract job uh, here, and uh, I have been here uh, for three years. Three years. Do you like it? <laughs> this is embarrassing uh, <laughs> a question. You know, it's hard because I've lived out of my own country before as well, and even if the place is good, sometimes you just really miss home. Is it hard for you being away from Syria? Yes, uh, it is hard to. Uh, uh, it's hard to come back to Syria now. Uh, nowadays, you know the situation there. Yeah. And uh, when I started uh, my job here, I didn't uh, uh, come back to my home until now. Waiting yeah. to solve the, the 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 problems there. Yeah, that's really hard. Do you have a lot of family back at home? Uh, yes, I have uh, my parents there parents. in Syria. Uh, they already came uh, in a visit uh, since um, uh, for uh, since since um, September last mm. September. They came in September. Yes. Very cool. Well, um, so you are in Saudi Arabia now. On you have a contract, and you're from Syria. How old are you? I'm 28. You're 28, and you're an engineer. You're a very busy job. You like to take a smoke break when you're stressed. Okay, <laughs> I'm learning all like, about I, you. <laughs> and I like to close my phone when I when I I became crazy. <laughs> Yeah, that's what you put those phones on silent. That's what I do. I'm like, and silent. Nobody yes. calls me. Very cool. Okay, well, since we don't know each other, I <laughs> thought we did. I'm Stephanie. That's my name. I'm from Ohio in the United States. Cool. Which is kind of, okay, this is America. My cat phone is America. This is the East Coast. Mm -hmm. Ohio is like right there. Right there. So it's like you've got like. Yeah. Um, no, this is the east. Oh, sorry. This is the east. <laughs> <laughs> I'm facing. Okay. So this yeah, is because the you, you, you look like in, in, the, in front of the mirror. <laughs> yes. I'm confused. Okay. This is the east coast. So you've got like New York City, Philadelphia. That's where I'm from. Um, you got like North Carolina, Florida. Let's see the little ear. That's Florida. That's Maine. Mm. Ohio is like right around like this eye. <laughs> How looks uh, looks like uh, Ohio? Um, it's farm country, so it's flat, lots of cornfields, soy fields. Um, hold on one second, I will show you what Ohio looks like. It's mostly country. Good. So what about what about Riyadh? Is it big city or country? Is it is uh, the the capital of uh, Saudi Arabia? It is uh, the biggest uh, city here in Saudi Arabia. It is in, in the middle, in the middle uh, of the country, and uh, it's uh, it's uh, a desert. It's a desert. That's yes. so cool. I've never been to the desert. We have them in America, but I've never been to one. Okay, this is what Ohio looks like. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's where I live. Long farm, time to, to see uh, trees. <laughs> it is long time to see trees, yeah. uh, farms. No trees, just farm. See, yes. this is this is um. Well, that looks like looks like wheat. That's corn. We have pumpkin festivals, which is really fun. That's corn right before it gets harvested. That's pretty, it's but great. it's very it's very flat. See, well, that's the look at that flat. There's nothing there. <laughs> So that's where I live now. That's not where I'm from. It's where I've lived for like 10 years. I'm from another part of the United States. Uh, how, how is uh, the weather uh, nowadays uh, there? It's, uh, right now it's cold, 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 oh. cold, 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 <laughs> and snowy. <laughs> Maybe and cold. minus, minus uh, degrees? Um, yes, freezing. It is so cold. And I will show you. Hold on. This is what it looks like in the winter. More flat, just covered in snow. <laughs> Same it's picture. Awesome. Just snow. Yeah, so that's that's what Ohio looks like. That's where I live. It's fun. The country is fun. Lots to do. You have lots of fairs and festivals.
So now you know all about me, and now I know all about you, new Muhammad. Nice to meet <laughs> no you. No other Muhammad. Nice to meet you too. <laughs> and I see Juan. Hi, Juan. Hi, Stephanie. How are you? I'm fine. Good. I was getting to know Muhammad. I thought it was the other Muhammad, but this is a new Muhammad from okay. from Syria who lives in Saudi Arabia. So, okay. Um, Muhammad, have you met Juan before, or is this the first time? I think I uh, saw him yesterday in one class. Um, I remember him because uh, he has a special uh, photo. He's, uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> he's, uh, some shoes, I think. Uh, yes, he's always I don't know, to get I don't know what, what is, what is uh, uh, the meaning of this uh, photo. If he can explain to us. What is what? The meaning of your picture, Juan. The meaning, just to show what I do. Yeah, Juan built the the case that the shoes are in. He he makes things. Oh. Carpenter. That's what it's called. Carpenter. <laughs> I was thinking of the word contractor. I'm like, that's not right. <laughs> carpenter. Oh, no, he's a yeah. carpenter. And he's always trying to tempt me to go buy more shoes. And I told him I don't need more shoes. But he keeps coming back with that photo. Making making me tempted. Okay. So one, how's your day going? So far, so good. So far, so good. That's good. Tell me what have you what have you done this week? What's new? This week, mm -hmm. uh, well, as you know, we celebrate a new year. Mm -hmm. uh, we spend some time with the family, having dinner, having drink, having every kind of food, and the Hanover, of course. Juan, tell me, you, you live in Mexico, right? Yeah, right. What do, you, what do you guys, what's the tradition in Mexico for New Year's? What do you like to do? Was it like just get together with family? Yeah, uh, first, uh, yes, the mainly is to dinner together at uh -huh. midnight. Um, you suppose you have to to eat twelve. Uh, oh my God, I don't know how to say you was in English. Uh, grapes. Oh, grapes. Okay. Yeah. You eat grapes at midnight. Yeah. Twelve grapes at midnight. Yeah. Really? That's cool. Yeah, yeah, we don't have that tradition in the states. And uh, um, you eat one grape and you ask for a wish. Oh. Another grape, another wish. So you have twelve wishes. Interesting. Yeah, we don't do that. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and when when the New Year's is coming uh, at mean uh, at zero 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 hours. Mm -hmm. You bring a kiss or a hug. Yeah. The, all the family. And then to dinner, to have dinner, to dance, to sing, to drink. You guys party. Oh yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. Mohammed, what about what about in Syria? What do you guys do for New Year's? What's your tradition? Um, now I can speak on uh, about. Uh, uh, have a New Year in uh, Riyadh in Saudi Arabia. Okay. I, 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 I'm already here. Uh, okay. Uh, for for uh, celebration, there is no celebration. This is, uh, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> go on. Just, just I go to uh, I went with my uh, friends. Uh, started to watch movie, uh, and then I came back to uh, my home. You know, I'm I'm single here. I'm uh, still alone. <laughs> And uh, they don't use to to celebrate uh, for. Uh, don't do for, that uh, special. There's no celebration in Saudi Arabia. No, there is no celebration in, in Saudi Arabia, uh, but in Syria, uh, in my uh, my original country, uh, they have uh, they have a celebration and they uh, go outside. Uh, uh, my my uh, my family they went to uh, to the restaurant and. Uh, Take the lunch and uh, uh, sorry the dinner and uh, having some fun with each other. I think um, I'm trying to think. I don't really celebrate New Year's, but I'm trying to remember all the traditions in America. 
One, you drink a lot. I know that's in the year's tradition. Everybody mm. drinks probably way, way too much. And you get together like at a party with your friends. You usually go to a party and we have the same like one, we do kiss at midnight, but not like your family. Like you wanna kiss like a love interest so that you your relationship will last so it's to be good luck to kiss at midnight. And usually um, you make a New Year's resolution. So you make a promise that you're going to do for the new year. So this year I'm going to do this, this, and this, or I'm going to quit doing this or whatever. So you make a New Year's resolution. And um, in New York City at Times Square, we have the big um, ball that drops mm -hmm. at midnight and there's a big countdown, everybody watches it. No matter where you are in the country, you watch it on TV, and you watch the ball drop, and everybody counts down together, and then it's Happy New Year, and then everybody... It's awesome. That works. Uh, actually, uh, actually I, uh, I celebrated the New Year uh, last last year, well, uh, when, when we, are, we are shifting from 2012 to 2011. Mm -hmm. I was in Dubai. Uh, it, it was uh, really awesome. I show I, I saw there uh, the fireworks uh, for uh, yeah lots of fireworks uh, yes uh, Khalifa Tower there is uh, Khalifa Tower the highest uh, tower uh, in Dubai it was really uh, great yeah it was uh, we shoot off fireworks in America too except in America you have to be careful because if you're in one area they're gonna put fireworks out if you're in a different area they just take their guns out and they shoot into the sky. So <laughs> you have you don't want to just be outside on the street in any area because you can people have died like that because the stray bullets have come down and killed people. Yes. So you want to be inside and be safe. It's not everywhere, but just in certain areas, they will just go outside and start shooting into the sky. Happy New Year! And then somebody, <laughs> some poor sucker, you know, a, a city away gets shot. So you got to be a little bit careful. You have to wear a helmet. <laughs> <laughs> well, that'll be our new New Year's tra tradition. Everybody wears helmets. Yeah, you have to be safety. <laughs> yes, safe. Okay. I am supposed to be completely done teaching the grammar by now, but as you see, I am not quite on time, so we better get started. We are talking about... Oh, again, our discussion topic is about libraries, which I know is not a super exciting thing for everybody, but my very first job was at a library. I love libraries. So they're, to me, they're a very happy place. And we're going to talk a little bit about whether or not they're going to be around 20 years from now. Because people read all their books online. They have Kindle and you know e-readers. Nobody's really taking books out of libraries anymore. And we can research anything you want on the internet. So you're not going to the library to do research. So it's kind of making them obsolete. So we're going to talk about what the future is for libraries and if they're still going to be around and how that will affect society in general. Mm. So for our warm-up question, I'll start with you, Juan. What is, how do you feel about libraries? Do you feel like they're necessary? Do you think they're still useful? What is your general opinion on libraries? Well, first of all, I never, never, never I use a library. Yeah. So. And as you said, all you research you have to do is you can do it by the internet. Mm -hmm. So I think libraries is going to be disappear. Yeah. Yes, I think so too. I'm very sad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mohammed, what about you? What do you think? Um, I think nowadays uh, it is famous to, to read the books and uh, 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 from the internet, by surfing mm -hmm. the internet, uh, you know all all uh, books now coming in PDF and you can download. But uh, but you cannot, uh, uh, you cannot uh, leave the libraries because sometimes you cannot find find the some books in uh, in the internet. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to go to a library and search. Uh, sometimes you can go there and uh, listen from other persons about uh, some new books uh, and sharing with them. Yeah. Mohammed, how often do you go to the library, would you say? 
Uh, I haven't go to library for maybe five years. Yeah. Before uh, I was studying there uh, during university. When I was in university, I I was uh, studying there uh, with my colleagues uh, in uh, library during uh, exams yeah. days. Uh, but after I have uh, after I have gradu graduate, uh, I graduated. I didn't attend the library more. Yeah. And that's everybody. I will say. Because I love the library, I really do. But I probably haven't been to the library just to just to read or to check out a book in two years. And I love the library. I I would be very sad to see them disappear. But everything's so conveniently done online. <laughs> it's you know you don't need to go to the library anymore. And it's kind of it makes me sad. But I can see why you know people aren't going to the government's not going to continue funding things that are not used and the internet is really making the libraries obsolete we don't need them because all of the book everything is available online but I will say this much and you might think I'm really weird but I love the smell of books like I do not read books online if I'm going to read I want a physical book now I might order it online and buy it and have it sent to my house so I will not have to go to the library but I am absolutely not going to just read it online. I like to hold the book. I like to smell the paper. I like to feel the book. Like I, it's very textile to me. So the, I might be weird, right. but huh, so I think my libraries are in for it. I think they're going bye bye. Just think how much the world has changed in ten years. Yes, the last uh, ten years. Uh... Technology, man, it's crazy. <sighs> okay, I'm lamenting. All right, we have to talk about our grammar. Mm -mm. Maybe if I can find it. Um, I found it. A little smaller. Okay, so we are talking about independent, dependent, and subordinate clauses. So we're going to talk about what those are. And we're basically just reviewing. This is an advanced class, so we are not going to be spending 20 minutes discussing the grammar. We'll just be reviewing what this is, um, about five minutes maybe, and then we're going to we're going to move on. So if you do have questions, you you got to holler them out, or else I'm going to just keep keep moving. All right. Let me know when you guys can see this. Yeah, I know. Yes. I can see it. Okay. Mohammed, can you see it as well? Yes, I can see. Yay! Sometimes the screen share doesn't work for me, so I always want to check. All right, so we're just going to take turns reading through this very quickly. Um, Juan, I'm going to start with you. Can you read the first point? Okay, first, an independent clause can stand alone without anything else. It contains a subject and verb and it is a complete toe. Jenny walked her dog. Bill and Tom hate salad. Very good. Okay, so independent clauses are a complete thought. That's the that's what you need to take away from that. An independent clause is a complete thought. It stands alone. It is complete with a subject and a verb. I eat. That's an independent clause. Subject, verb. I eat. It can stand alone. You don't need anything else. You might add other things because you want a little bit more information, but it can be a sentence all on its own. Okay, Mohammed, can you read the second point? Second, uh, a dependent clause contains a subject and a ver and verb, but it doesn't uh, show a complete thought. It cannot be sentence. Usually, you will see as you will see, you will see a dependent marker uh, word in the clause. When when she f finishes dinner, when the marker, uh, this is incomplete because we don't know what happens after she wash, uh, she finishes dinner. Uh, if he would have met her in the park, if uh, if if is uh, if is the marker, this is incomplete because we don't know what would have happened. If they met in the park. 
Okay, thank you. I have to continue. Oh, you can stop right there. Okay. okay, so dependent clauses, although they contain a subject and a verb, it is not a complete thought. They cannot be a sentence. So you will know when there's a dependent clause because usually there's a marker. And even if there's not a marker, you will know because you're, you're missing information. The sentence won't make sense. So when she finishes dinner, if I said that to you, Juan, when she finishes dinner, you would be looking at me like, yes, <laughs> and what happens? You need more information. I'm not finishing my thought. So we have common markers and expressions. <clears throat> I'm going to read through them very fast. As, as if, after, when, although, because, even if, even though, if, in order to, since, whether, though, unless, which, until, whatever, before, whenever, and while. Those are your most common marker words and expressions. And I'm actually going to copy and paste those into the chat so that you have them. If I can. This? No! I'm fighting the computer. I'm losing. My computer always wins. It's much smarter than me. <laughs> okay. So, if you have a sentence that has a marker like this, you know, as, as if, after, when, although, any of those, then you know that's a dependent clause. It is not a complete thought. So independent clause, complete thought. Dependent clause, incomplete thought. All right. Mm -hmm. Questions so far? No. No? All righty. Third, you will use the independent clause with the dependent clause to make a complete sentence. The independent clause clauses in the examples are underlined. She always drives Timmy to work when his car is broken down. Because she went, he left the play early and drove himself home. <clears throat> so if you have just... She always drives Timmy to work. Is that a complete thought? Yeah. When his car is broken down, is that a complete thought? No, it is incomplete. Exactly. So you can combine independent clauses with dependent clauses to make a complete sentence. Because she went. If I said because she went, we have a subject and a verb. But does that make any sense to you? Sorry? If I say because she went. Is not a complete sentence. Not complete. He left the play early and drove himself home. Is that a complete thought? Yes. Sure, it is a complete sentence. Exactly. So, it, independent clauses and dependent clauses are not difficult. You just have to figure out whether or not it's a complete thought or an incomplete thought. And you can combine them to make a complete sentence. Fourth one. Can you read fourth? Four, independent marker words and coordinated conjunction can be both be used to connect two independent clause. Independent marker words are used at the beginning of the independent clause and can be begin, 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 <laughs> begin, begin a sentence that doesn't need a dependent clause. Clause, clause. If this okay, clause really quick, clause, I'm going to teach you how to say it like I do, but a lot of people might say like clause because they have a different accent than me, but just say clause. It's like an aw sound. Clause or clause. Clause. Almost oh. like um, it sounds very much like the C-L-A-W-S, like a cat has claws. It's like in the chat box, you can see it, clause. So if you saw the word C L A W S Close. clause, oh, okay, like okay. a cat claw, mm -hmm. it's pronounced exactly the same clause. Okay, thank you. Okay, you can continue reading. But uh, you don't share the. Oh, you can't see it. No. Oh. See, I told you. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Let me let me see if I can get it back. Okay. 
So for independent market one, independent market one used to begin at independent clouds and can begin a sentence that doesn't need a dependent clause. If the second independent clause is in a sentence has an independent marker word, you must use a semicolon before the marker word. Even though she did not trust him, the mate at the bank, consequently she loaned him the money. John loved Grace more than anyone he had ever loved before. However, he knew that they need to break up. Okay. May I continue? Um, can you read the common independent markers? Common independent markers are, however, consequently, also, furthermore, moreover, nevertheless, and therefore. Thank you. Okay, so con <coughs> independent markers are used at the beginning of independent clauses that don't need a dependent clause. So I'm going to copy these into the chat so that you guys have them. <clears throat> okay. All right, I have to move on because we're we should be done with the grammar. Um, yeah. Let's see where we. I'm going to just read through the rest of it very quickly. It says coordinating conjunctions are used at the beginning of an independent clause. A comma is needed before the coordinating conjunction in cases where the second independent clause begins with a coordinating conjunction. She knew that she had to be there at eight or miss the play, comma, but she was late again. Timmy loves to live in different in many different countries, comma, yet he only speaks English. So again, these are these are other markers that are used at the beginning of independent clauses. The not dependent clauses. So it says there are seven coordinating conjunctions. And, but, for, or, nor, so, and yet. It is common for writers to leave out the comma in sentences. John has a nice car, but he does not like to drive. Okay, so you will see it with without the comma. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go into the chat. Okay, our last point. Two common errors besides sentence fragments are comma splices and fused sentences. A comma splice is when you use a comma between two independent clauses. Incorrect. I really like speaking English, comma. It is a lot of fun. I really like speaking English, comma. And it is a lot of fun. I really like speaking English, semicolon. It is a lot of fun. I really like speaking English because it is a lot of fun. And because it is a lot of fun, comma. I really like speaking English. So you cannot just throw a comma in between two independent clauses. You can put a comma and, you can do a semicolon, you can use because, you can put because at the beginning and then do a comma, but you cannot just have two independent clauses with a comma in between them. That is called a comma splice and it is incorrect. Okay. Um, our last point is fused sentences. So when you have a fused sentence, it is due to two independent clauses that are not separated by any punctuation. This is also known as a run-on sentence. Incorrect. Jenny is always disruptive. I do not like her. Okay. Remember, independent clauses are complete thoughts. If you have one sentence with more than one complete thought, there has to be some punctuation, either comma and, semicolon, because, yet, however, you cannot just continue on with the sentence without any punctuation. That is a run-on sentence, and that can, if you're writing anything in English, that can really uh, mess up what you're writing. It can mess with your grammar pretty bad. So, for example, yesterday I went to the store. I really like candy. The store was really clean. Candy's really tasty. I mean, it's just going on and on. There's no, there's no real thought. It's just sentence, 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 sentence. Independent thought, independent thought, without it really flowing into anything. You don't want to have run-on sentences. So this is the correct way to do it. Jenny is always disruptive, period. That's a sentence. I do not like her. That's a separate sentence. You can separate them with a the semicolon. You can separate them with a the semicolon and then also use um, a marker, a mark word, um, therefore, 
or can, you can use and. That's a, a conjunction. So it's up to you, but you cannot just continue on in the sentence. There has to be some punctuation. And this is more about writing than speaking, but it's important to know you don't want to use run-on sentences or fused sentences. Okay? Okay. All right. Let's move on to our discussion. Let's talk about the sad future of public libraries. All right. And let me very quickly... Send this to you guys. Okay, there's the article. Will public libraries become extinct? Um, Muhammad, can you read? Let's see, read up until put another put another way. So read this whole first section. Okay, I'll try. As uh, someone who has spent a fair amount of time analyzing business dis disruption. I think it is pretty clear that libraries are eventually going to fade away. I understand that this, is, this isn't a popular view because libraries and librarians are awesome, but it's hard to avoid the obvious. Libraries provide many service services, yes, but they, the most important service is lending book, books. Tablets and readers are a much better way to get a book than borrowing. Sorry. <laughs> Come <Sorry>. on. <laughs> what are you doing? I don't know. That was the website. <laughs> he called me. <laughs> okay. My bad. Go on. Okay, I will continue. Uh, tablets and uh, readers are a uh, much better way to get a book than uh, borrowing, borrowing uh, it or buying it uh, at a bookstore. You can get uh, the book right away the split second you want it. More and more and more people are going to buy tablet devices and readers and e-readers over the, uh, the next 10 years. Power, reader, power readers are dis, dis pro, dis, disproportionately dispro, disproportionately uh, more likely to buy uh, tablets and e-readers any, uh, anyone who really loves uh, reading, buying and borrowing books it's likely going to buy a, an uh, e-reader. An e Once you, you really start uh, enjoy reading on a, a Kindle or an iPad, you uh, your interest in the vis uh, in visiting a bookstore or regularly goes down precipitously. Pre uh, buying a book. <laughs> Sorry for all the crazy words. <laughs> <laughs> this is first time I l listen to this one. Okay, uh, buying the, uh, a book cheaply on your uh, Kindle or iPad is so much better than. Uh, one, uh, go to library to cross uh, fingers, hope they have the book in the stock. Uh, number three, borrow the book for uh, read it, remember to return it, and uh, drive back to the library to return it. That's a lot of work. Thank you. Perfect. All right. So before we move on with this article, there was one point I really wanted to mention. In the last paragraph, it says to cross your fingers, hope they have the book in stock. Do you guys know what it means to cross your fingers? Yeah. Do you do that in Mexico as well, Juan? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mohammed, what about you? Do you know what that gesture means when people cross their fingers? Yeah, maybe it means uh, he's thinking if the book is available or not, or like this. Um, you can cross fingers. your fingers about lots of things. Juan can. Juan, can you explain it, since you guys also have that same... Well, cross your fingers simply means that you are hopefully they be, you have luck in to find what you want. Yeah. So it's like hoping for luck. Mm -hmm. um, we also have another thing that we do in English, in, I'm sorry, in English, in America, where if you are telling somebody something, 
but you cross your fingers behind your back, that means that you're lying. <laughs> so <laughs> we do that too. Yeah. I don't do it. I'm just I'm just teaching you some American culture. So, for example, um, really quickly, Mom, and I'm going to show you what this would look like. Mm, okay. Hello. Okay, so this is how we cross our fingers. So it's our first two fingers, and mm. you'll see people go like this, like if they are, like you might say, Juan, I'm up for a new job. I really, really hope I get it. Cross your fingers for me. It means, like, wish me luck. It's to wish somebody luck. Uh-huh. Or if Juan says, Stephanie, did you steal my, let's say, did you steal my wallet? And I go, no, no, I didn't do it, but my fingers are crossed behind my back. It means I'm lying. <laughs> so that's just a very apparently American and also Mexican thing to do. <laughs> I, I didn't know that went everywhere. I will start to use this uh, uh, sign uh, when I put when I'm I'm lying. I will put my hand up backside. Yeah, but it learns excellently. Juan, do you guys do that in Mexico as well? Do you put you cross your fingers behind your back? Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. It I don't I don't know if we got we might have gotten it from Mexico. Americans take so many different bits of everybody's culture, but we all do it. I don't do it, but it's this is like this is like wish me luck. And if it's behind your back, that's like I'm absolutely not telling you the truth. I don't know why that means I'm lying, and I don't know why we think it's okay to lie. <laughs> we cross our fingers, but that's what we do. Okay, so that was just a quick culture point. Um, Juan, can you read these three paragraphs? Which one? Um, start and put another way and read all the way, all three paragraphs. Okay. Let me put my glasses. Okay, put another way. I really don't see how a world can exist where tons of bookstores close, while libraries generally stay open. Yes, there are plenty of things a bookstore does besides selling and stocking books. But it turns out that when someone else provides the core service much better. All the ancillary service that a bookstore provides Oh, don't provide no value to attract <laughs> customers. Wog, what was that noise? <laughs> Just because I was lost. You ate about eight words. <laughs> I go, oh. <laughs> okay, continue, please. Okay, to be clear, I agree that libraries might stick around longer than the underlying consumer behavior supporting them. Why? Because funding libraries is a political, not an economic decision. Nevertheless, I believe strongly that public libraries will turn into ghost towns in 5 to 15 years. At which point it will become very difficult to justify funding them and keeping them open? I understand that libraries lend books, which is cheaper than buying them. And yes, I understand that there are other reasons to visit libraries besides borrowing books. So, to be clear, I don't think that libraries visit visiting will disappear as a behavior. Just a visiting bookstore hasn't disappeared as a behavior, however, enough demand will drop to cause industry failure. Why? Because libraries have high visit costs that need to be covered by a tree's hole level of demand. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> what does trees hold mean? Um, ooh, that's a hard word to, de to describe. Okay, a threshold is like, let's see, how would I define this word? <laughs> Some words are, are, are really difficult for me to describe them. Yeah. You can ask Google. <laughs> ask Google. Google, what does threshold mean? <laughs> Google didn't answer me. Um, threshold is like a base. I don't know how else to describe it. It's like a base. So when you're talking about a threshold level, it's like the base level of demand. Like um, We also sometimes will call, call the door, like your front door, the bottom of your front door that you walk over, we also call that the threshold. So it's kind of like the 
the foundation. I guess you can look at it like a foundation. So in order for libraries to stay in business, they have to have, there's a foundation level or a set level or a base level of demand that they need to meet in order to cover the cost to keep a library open. So that's what threshold is. It's kind of like a foundation. If that's cleared anything up for you. <laughs> Did that help at all? <laughs> okay, let's ask Google. <laughs> I got more confused than ever. You got more confused than no. <laughs> well, that wasn't good. Threshold. Threshold. All right. The definition of threshold. Let's see if they, if Google can do better than me. Okay. A piece of wood, we're not talking about that one. The entrance of a doorway, that's a different one. Um, the place or point of beginning, the outset, the point that must be exceeded to begin producing a given effect or result or to elicit a response. Did that help at all? <laughs> no, I'm like the guy in the right. <laughs> 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 That's what you feel like right now? <laughs> yeah. Okay. One, it's basically, do you know what the word foundation is? Do you know what a foundation? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yes. Okay. A threshold is like a foundation. It's like the, the beginning or the bottom of something. So if you're talking about a threshold level, it's the absolute basic level that something has to meet. Now you can go higher than a threshold. As a minimum. Yeah, like the mm -hmm. minimum level of something. Okay, okay. So it has it has many definitions. That's why it's really hard for me to explain. It's not one of those words that only has one definition. Okay. Um, let me see. Let me finish oh, is there more? Uh, I'm gonna finish reading this really quickly. Okay, <laughs> that was a weird article. Okay, it says, this, this answer is in direct rebuttal to Mark Bodnick's answer. Most libraries now lend ebooks, music, and other media as well. But the, reason real, but the real reason libraries will disappear is that people perceive them as only or mostly lending books. Libraries are and have been on the front lines of technology forever, but people persist in thinking of them as old-fashioned. This has been true since the early 1900s, by the way. Henry Dana Gibson, one of the early heads of the American Library Association, wrote about it to the association. The bottom line is people are very, very bad at learning new things, and they haven't been in the library since school. They perceive it as being the same as it was then. So when tax time comes, they, I'm not going to say that word, that libraries are old-fashioned and don't want to support them. Forget that libraries provide e-readers to people who can't afford them, lend e-books, art, music, teach classes, do podcasts, provide database access and training, function as employment centers when the state has cut the funding for those. They provide media services for the homebound, blind, disabled, safe places for children to go, collect graphic novels to get teens to read, provide classes on new technology, and spaces for community meetings. They have Twitter and YouTube and Facebook pages, and they talk to you there. Okay. So we have two opposing ideas. So the one person is saying that libraries are going to close because the demand is not great enough. Not because they should close, but because enough people are not going to go. This other person is saying that libraries are actually very much in the modern age. They're changing with technology. They offer all of these services, but it's only our perception of them that hasn't changed. We look at libraries as being old-fashioned. So. Yeah. Juan, starting with you, what is your opinion? Uh, I think in a certain point he had a reason because, for example, you say before that you have two years without going to the library. Maybe they have new things, new uh, technology, I don't know. Mm -hmm. So in certain point he goes right. Yeah. Mohammed, what do you think? Uh, for me, I'm with the second uh, opinion 
and um, I see uh, the libraries and librarians uh, should uh, change their, their style uh, uh, of library maybe to electronic uh, books or if you can uh, go to the library and start reading by computers or they are putting ABATs in one library like this you can uh, pick up and start uh, uh, reading just to follow the modern modern style of life. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> this is my current opinion. I do think that library, I think it's amazing that they offer so many services because we have to remember what libraries are. It's, it's making everything available to everyone regardless of how much money you have. You know, for years, long before public libraries, very, very wealthy people had private libraries. They had many books, but not anybody could just go read them. You had to it, you had to have your own personal library. Churches had libraries. Universities had libraries, but they weren't available to the public. Public libraries are an amazing thing because it doesn't matter if you're dead broke and you have no, you can have no home, and you can go to the library and study and learn and be trained and learn to new technology. My fear is that we are too lazy. That's what I really think it is. It's not that the library doesn't provide these services. It's just that we can do it from home. So we don't like to leave the house. It's like, I could go to the library and rent an ebook, or I could stay home and rent an ebook. So I think that's what it really boils down to is technology, although very, very useful, has made us extremely lazy and also made us want instant gratification. We want if we have an idea that we want to do something, we want it right now. I don't know about you guys. When I was a kid, if you wanted a book from the library, you were okay to wait a month until that book came in. Like we were more patient, but now it's like, no, I want it right this second because that's what technology has done for us. If we want something, it's right there. So I fear that our laziness is really going to be the death of the public library. What do you think, Juan? Do you think our laziness is going to affect public libraries? Oh yeah, um, uh, there become people more lazy. It is all by hand. Or you have all are to reach of your hand. Yeah, it's a good thing, but it's a bad thing. Mohammed, what do you think? Yes, uh, I do uh, uh, agree with uh, Stephanie. Oh, sorry, uh, was Stephanie? Yes, and uh, I see if. Uh, uh, we have everything in uh, in front of uh, us in uh, in uh, our hands uh, that will make uh, us uh, more lazy and uh, uh, will not uh, make us uh, active to go outside and start to searching for books. Yeah, I think that's really the scary thing because just in I would say the last five years. Think about how many things we now do online that we used to physically go and have to do. Mm. We bank online. We don't even like going to the bank. If we can avoid it, we are not going to a bank. We don't even want to call a bank. We want to do everything online through a computer. Don't have to talk to anybody. Some, some people grocery shop online. We do most of our shopping online. We, clothe, we shop for clothes, shoes, electronics. Everything is done sitting in our house, in our PJs, staring at a computer. So this is the world that we are now entering into, doing everything conveniently from home. Anything that requires us to leave our house, I have fear will slowly. If we could get like all of our food restaurants to just bring the food to us, I don't think we'd leave our house. I'm really afraid this is what the world is heading, <laughs> not leaving our house. And I'm calling, wondering that's calling, affecting. Colingo is an example. Yes. Uh, <laughs> we can st attend the, the class. Uh, I am here in Saudi Arabia. You are in, uh, uh, in, in uh, America and Stephanie mm -hmm. in other place. Uh, without uh, I, maybe I'm, I'm lying on my uh, bed and I, I'm taking the the course. I'm telling <laughs> everything's become fun. so convenient. And you think about it for you guys. Okay, it's really cool. I personally love Colingo because you can connect with so many people from all over the world. But if you had a school, let's say two blocks away for the same price, who had a native English speaker as your teacher and students from all over the world, and you had Colingo, you probably would just do Colingo because then you wouldn't have to leave your house. 
<laughs> and that's the world we live in. We've become ex exceptionally lazy. So I think our laziness is going to kill the public library. And I'm, that me, makes me kind of sad. For me, I, I think Kulingu uh, encouraged me to start le learning uh, English because, you know, I, when I'm thinking I have to come back from my uh, work and uh, uh, then after that I will uh, go again uh, outside and uh, this will make me lazy but if, uh, yeah. if, if, I can, if I can start the class here in my uh, my room in my uh, uh, house uh, that encourage me that I have time any because you know if, if, if because if you, uh, if I want to go to class maybe I will spend uh, two hours uh, dur dur during a traffic jam. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing that life has become more convenient. Unfortunately, some things will, won't just, they won't make the cut. And I think libraries are heading that way. I don't think they'll be around in 20 years. And it makes me kind of sad, but, it, you know, that's the way the world is. Things change, so. That's all. Do you guys have any questions or any comments for me before we end class today? Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I just want to ask you why uh, they say the show when the time, the tax time comes, the beach, the libraries are all fashion. What does it mean? Um, okay, so when tax time comes around, that's when basically we decide the government tries to figure out where they're going to spend the taxpayers' money. So we all in America pay taxes. When you work, you pay taxes. And they take all of that money and it goes to schools, it goes to public libraries, it goes to hospitals, it goes to road construction and things like that. These are things that are funded by the government. Mm -hmm. If they feel like something is not useful or it's not necessary, then they don't want to spend the money on paying for that when that money could go to something else or taxes could be lowered, which they'll never mm -hmm. be lowered. But oh, yeah. that money could be redistributed to go to something that, that is more useful. And the reason they say that they, I'm not going to, I'm going to say B word, I don't curse. But the reason they say they do that, to do that in English means to complain. So basically they complain that libraries are old-fashioned. Okay, so they, they, they always, uh, they are thinking it is no more useful, right? Yeah, so they're like, why are we paying for something that nobody is using? And the government will not support uh, by, by funding. Yeah, so right now the government is still supporting libraries, but it's only a matter of time before they become a thing of the past, which does make me sad. I do love libraries, and I think they're very useful. But I'm as lazy as every other person in the world, <laughs> which is why I haven't been in two years. So although I love them, I don't see myself running to the library anytime soon. So there it is. Um, uh, I will. I have an hour break, but I will be back in one hour. I have a role play class, so if you guys are interested, we're going to be discussing breakups. So we're going to be role playing breakups. So in English, we have classic breakup lines, like the things everybody says. So we're going to talk about some of those, some of the slang that we use when you're breaking up with your boyfriend or girlfriend, and just basically the breakup fight. So we're going to be role-playing that. So if you guys are still around, you, I would really love for you to join me. And otherwise, thank you very much for coming to class today. It was really fun. And I hope to see you again soon. Okay. Thank you very much. Goodbye, you, you guys. Thank you.